Hey everyone, this video is going to be covering the new Silver Waste area in Guild Wars 2. We came out with the latest Living World content. So basically this area is divided into five parts. There is the base camp, which is where the, the waypoint is and basically where you can launch all of your, your adventures from. And it's got a few different amenities that you can use. Uh, you can even get some more by donating bandit crests. And if you do donate these bandit crests to the mercenary requisitioner at Camp Resolve, then you will get the mercantile mercenary achievement. So there's um, uh, the full achievement will get it will be 25 bandit crests donated, and that'll get you um, all tiers of that achievement. So this area is called Camp Resolve, and it's uh, just basically a starting area. Then the uh, rest of the area is divided up into four sections for the four different forts. So there is Amber Sandfall, Blue Oasis, Indigo Cave, and Red Rock Bastion. And these are the forts that basically everyone in the area is going to be defending and retaking from the Mordrum. And it's where basically all the fights are centered. So there is an achievement for defending each one. Um, basically every so often Mortem will attack the fort and you'll have to hold them off for a certain amount of time, like four or five minutes. And then once you've held them off that long without losing the the defender, there's like one NPC that you have to, to keep alive. And if you've held them off for long enough, then they'll go away and that will get you the achievement for the defender. So one of the really cool things you can do while defending is to call in an airstrike. Uh, now what you do is you take a signal torch and go light the bonfire. Each one of the bases has one of each. And once the bonfire is lit, it'll take a few seconds, and then an airstrike will arrive and do quite a bit of damage to the enemies outside the base. It won't generally kill them, but it's a huge help in supporting the defense. A couple of the bases have some defensive equipment as well. Uh, Indigo Cave has a mortar up top that you can fire down on them. and. Red Rock Bastion has a couple of arrow carts, which are pretty good. Uh, the bleeding is really good against husks, and the cripple is good to slow down some of the faster enemies so that the defenders don't get overwhelmed too quickly. At each one of these forts, a legendary enemy can spawn as well. So, it'll be random. But it usually happens once the fort, uh, all four forts are controlled and upgraded to um, uh, three, like a level three defenses. And then they will spawn. There is the Annihilator, the Demolisher, the Executioner, and the Tormentor. Uh, the Tormentor appears at blue. The Executioner appears at amber. The Demolisher appears at indigo, and the Annihilator appears at red. So when they appear, just go ahead and uh, call it out on the map, and everyone there will go ahead and take it down as quickly as possible. And if you're successful, you get the achievement for each one of those, and you also get a title that goes with it. And then if you get all four of them, you get the, the achievement, the be-all, end-all, and that's also a title. So there's five of those achievements slash titles in total. So once you've hold held the, um, the forts for a certain amount of time, then they will go into a Enter the Breach event, where each fort will open up a hole in the ground and you'll have to jump in. Don't walk in because you can um, die when you hit the ground, but jumping in will ensure that you you know, basically survive the fall. Uh, and it'll take you into an underground area for each one. So each of the bases has a different um, champion at the bottom of each of the pits. So at Red Rock there is the Champion Mordrum Husk Copper, which gives the Copper achievement. And basically, um, it's a husk, so it's got a lot of toughness, and you want to use as much Condi as possible. So just lay on as many conditions as you can, and try not to do any AoE, because when you pop the, lar the poison bubbles, they will heal him. Because poison bubbles heal allies in the area there. So basically, just focus on him and do as much Condi damage as possible. You can do his other damage, but it won't be as effective because this is toughness. Now, at... Amber Sandfall, there is a Champion Mordrum Troll Iron. So the iron is a troll. You just want to do as much damage as possible, and there's a lot of dodging his AoE attacks. So just watch the, the ground, watch out for those AoE you know, signals, and get out of the way as best as possible. 
Um, some veteran mortem trolls will also spawn there. Basically, you can ignore them for the most part and just kind of take them down with AoE as you go. And you're also going to have to watch out for uh, his his bee storms and whatnot. So, this one isn't too bad. You know, just do as much damage as possible and then watch out for dying. Um, there's also the Champion Mordrum Thrasher Platinum at Blue Oasis. Now, this one is uh, a little interesting. Basically, you want to, again, avoid AoE damage because it has poison bubbles which will heal him. And then uh, watch out for his attacks. Um, generally, it's not too bad. There's one big AoE that you need to watch out for, which pulls you into his attack. So if you dodge that one, you're pre pretty much good. And you're going to want to stay ahead of him, because he will teleport around in a clockwise faction. So, when he goes invulnerable, he's about to teleport, and then he will teleport to the next of this, um, the next section in this kind of like a four area square. So you're going to want to stay ahead of him so you can keep damaging him after he's teleported and you don't have to run to catch up to him again. So he's pretty easy, not too bad. And then finally, our, um, it might be the most difficult ones because their silver and gold are at Indigo Cave. The Champion Mordrum Terror Rifts. So there's two of them in here in a circular, uh, it's kind of like a track. And what you want to do is just do as much damage as possible, and when you see the bubbles, you only want to pop them when the terror rifts are next to them, because this will stop them in place and you can do as much damage as possible when they're stopped. You also need to watch out for the fact that when they get close to each other, you can uh, watch on the map, that's a good way to tell where they are in relation to each other, because when they get next to each other, they will do a scream and quickly kill anyone within you know, a certain area of them. So you want to stay back away from them when they get close to each other. Um, you don't really need to be too close to these unless you're, you know, going full melee, which isn't advisable since they do charge and knock you about. So a ranged is a good strategy here, and just stay away from them when they get together. And other than that, it's it's pretty easy to avoid them and do damage. So you need to take both of them down for this group, and it's it's not bad. Uh, you don't actually have to defeat both of them at the same time in the same uh, go for the achievement. So, uh, you can take them down one at one time, one at the other time, and still get the achievement, but you won't get the loot for it or complete the event. So that's it for those champions underground. Um, they're not too difficult. You'll need the, you know, a group to take them down, obviously. And if uh, everyone knows what they're doing, it's pretty easy. There's also an achievement for using the shovels. It's called Silver Waste Shoveler. Um, when you complete events, you will sometimes get a shovel, which you can use to uncover lost bandit chests. Now you need a, uh, lock, a lock pick you can get from the vendors there, or you can get them as drops sometimes, to open these chests, and they have a lot of pretty good loot, so it's a good idea to, use, to do that. The shovels have two skills. One will send out like a sonar pulse, and you can follow one of the green lines it sends out to a little mound, which will highlight with a ring around it and a little beam of light above it. And if you use the shovel um, while facing this mound, uh, right next to it, it will uncover the lockbox, the, lo the lost bandit chest, and you can open it up with one of the, the lockpicks. And that'll get you the achievement for just for doing it once with the, using the shovel once. There are also lost badges, which are similar to the lost coins in the previous sections. And these badges, there's 30 of them hidden throughout the silver wastes. So I'll be doing a separate video on those. Look for the link in the uh, the video or the, the description below. And that pretty much covers the silver wastes. So uh, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it helpful.